Recently, I came up with the perfect plan. I created a spreadsheet where I categorized everything within the log in different tiers of difficulty. I can now use this spreadsheet to generate random tasks based on which tier the account is progressed on. After 100% completion of each tier, I will move on to the next one until finally completing the elite tier. In the previous episode of Generate Task, we embarked on our journey of obtaining 5 uniques from hard clue scrolls. It was set out to be a long grind, and after obtaining 2 uniques on our second clue, we're now given the task of completing the Swan Song quest to be able to continue our current clue scroll. Before we begin our grind, let's take a look at the requirements for the Swan Song quest so that we can lay out a plan of action. Currently, I only have one of the requirements done already, which is 40 crafting. The other skills needed for the quest are 66 magic, 62 cooking, 62 fishing, 45 smithing, and 42 fire making. The magic and fishing can both be boosted by 3 levels by using a wizard mind bomb for magic and a fish pie for fishing. Other than the skills, we also need to get 60 more quest points for a total of 100, including completion of the One Small Favor and Garden of Tranquility quests. In order to get these quest points, I'll be doing a lot of quick and easy quests so that I can get the necessary quest points as fast as possible without indirectly unlocking too many powerful things. Essentially focusing on only the minimal requirement for our task. To start things off, I'll be doing all of the free to play quests other than Dragon Slayer. And that's the final free to play quest done for now. X marks the spot completed. This leaves us at 76 quest points, so 24 more to go. Feels like it's been a while but there's another Leo random event which we can hopefully get another zombie outfit piece from for our collection log. What will it be? Items or emote? Hey nice, two more zombie outfit pieces. Creature of Fenken Strain completed, we now have 78 quest points and we also got 28 thieving. Finishing Garden of Tranquility was one of the two specific quests required for Swansong as well. And that's 80 quest points. Jungle Potion, 81 quest points and 19 herb lore. So Jungle Potion was one of the requirements for Shiloh Village, which in turn is a requirement for one small favor. And there we go, that is Shiloh Village done as well. We now have all of the requirements for one small favor other than 30 smithing. I sold all of the random artifacts from the Shiloh Village quest which gives a little bit of GP. So I figured I might as well get rid of them. Now it's time to start one small favor, a quest loved by many. 20 Herbler was also something I still needed to clean the Herolander for the Guttix rest. I'm at the part of having to kill Slaglith and in case you don't know, the damage reduction when not using a pickaxe is only applied when the damage actually hits. So in order to deal full damage with any weapon, like me using a magic shortbow right now, you simply just have to make sure that you are wielding a pickaxe every time the damage actually hits. So there's a little trick for you all at home. We have finally made it back to Shiloh Village with the red mahogany we had to get and that means one small favor completed. We got a steel keyring and two XP lamps that grant 10,000 XP each. Now again, they require a level of 30 to be used, I'm pretty sure. So I figured the best thing to use it on at this point is magic. 
as it's one of the skill requirements we have to get and probably one of the hardest ones. Now after this quest we ended up with zero law runes left in the bank. So first things first, I'm gonna make another trip to the mage arena in the wilderness to get some more law runes for easy transportation. Okay, I got 100 law runes again, went through the entire cash stack but that'll last us a while so we should be fine. Fight arena done for 87 quest points, 49 attack and 30 thieving. Sheep herder completed for easy quest points. Clock tower, check. Witch's house, another 4 quest points, just 4 more to go. And with the completion of the murder mystery quest, we end up with 99 quest points. Now I still need one more for swan song, but what I'm gonna do is complete the sea slug quest for the final quest point, as well as some fishing levels which we also need to get for the swan song quest. My fire making level wasn't high enough yet for the sea slug quest, so there we go, that's 30 fire making. Gonna do the final quest and then continue working on all of these skills. And there we go, that's 100 quest points and the first requirement done on our list. We got 24 fishing from the sea slug quest, so now we can go straight to fly fishing for some easy levels. Time to start the skilling grind. I decided to finish off an easy one first with 42 fire making. Nice and quick using the willow locks I had in the bank from when we got 60 woodcutting previously. Alright, that should be the final iron bar, let's take a look. 1279 iron bars made. Now I'm gonna turn all of these into plate bodies to get the required smithing level of 45. And it'll bump up our cash stack again when I sell those to Horvik in Verok. The final 4 bars. Boom, 45 smithing. Another skill requirement done, just fishing, cooking and magic left. Magic will be a bit annoying but fishing and cooking shouldn't be too bad. They're very afk so let's go and start fly fishing in Shiloh after I sell off all of these plate bodies. And that's the final batch of plate bodies sold which gives us 78k cash, that's pretty decent. The next thing on the list we'll work on now is the 62 fishing and cooking requirement. Now I'll only train fishing until 59 like I said before cause I can boost with a fish pie. And in case you don't know, right here in the cooking guild you can trade with Romilly Weaklax. And he has an assortment of pies you can purchase with one of them being the fish pie. Gonna get myself a few of them because I will have to fish several monkfish during the quest. So I might need several boosts to do so. Okay I stocked up on 5000 feathers at Port Sarim. Should be more than enough and I'm heading over to Shiloh village now. 30 fishing, so now we can also catch salmon and hopefully get some increased experience rates. Got another Leo random event and got an emote this time, but I think I actually already have the full zombie outfit, so I'm quickly gonna check on the collection log. Yeah sweet, we have all of these zombie pieces, which I didn't realize previously, so I guess we don't have to do the Leo random anymore. Level 50 already, just been afking this so it's pretty chill. 9 more levels to go until we are done with fishing for now. Hey, another mime show, nice. Let's get another outfit piece. Oh hey, look who showed up. <laughs> Task only UIM, shout out to the boys that have joined me on this journey so far. If any of you watching are intrigued by the playstyle or just want to hang out with me and the other Task accounts, feel free to join the CC and Discord at any time. The info can be found in the description of this video. Woo, and we get a My Mask, awesome. See that's one thing about fishing as well is that it seems to give a lot of random events. Another one done and another piece obtained, which I think is the first camo piece on our list now. There it is boys, 59 fishing. That's what we needed as we can now use the fish pies we got earlier to boost to 62 to fish the monkfish during the swan song quest. Gonna continue with cooking now, get that up to 62, which I think we will be able to do with the raw trout and salmon we got banked from the fishing grind. 40 cooking, 50 cooking, and that's 62 cooking. Nice and easy, much quicker than the fishing grind of course. And now all that's left for us to get is the magic requirement. And I guess I'll also get this one final prayer level so that I can use protect from magic versus the sea troll queen. Cause I think it'll be fairly hard if I don't and I'm really close to the level anyways. 
Now for the magic training I wanted to try something I hadn't done before. A while back they changed the point system in the enchantment room where you get decent points when enchanting the regular shapes as well. Without breaking down the entire calculations it essentially means that you can keep going infinitely with level 4 enchant or higher. Meaning you don't have to spend any money on training magic with somewhat decent XP rate. Now like I said I had never done this before and it turns out that you can only buy the runes back from the store in increments of 1, making it very annoying to restock every time so that kinda put me off from continuing this method. I left off with keeping 300 enchantment points as I was going to buy the necessary mist and lava runes for the quest from mage training arena anyways. So I then figured I should just get some money from the agility pyramid to then buy nature runes and do the alchemy room instead. This room is super good for magic training and it gives upwards of 120k xp per hour, meaning that this was by far the fastest way of me working towards my magic level goal. Now originally I thought I would simply not deposit the coins in order to avoid getting alchemy points, but I then realized that I actually had to deposit them in order to to get the XP rates I was after, considering basically half of the XP comes from the bonus you get after depositing. I'll probably end up using these points when I get MTA tasks, but there will still be plenty of points needed beyond this, so I reckon there's not much harm in doing so. With the magic requirement out of the way, all that was left for me to get was 37 prayer to unlock protect from magic, which I got from burying a few big bones from hill giants. With all of the preparations out of the way, it's time for the Swan Song quest. We have protected the Piscatoris fishing colony from troll attacks and have dealt with the mighty sea troll queen. Granted that the battle was a bit easier than I had expected, only had to use a couple of food and managed to hit fairly well in my tanky range setup. Time to grab our reward over here, lots of XP. We now have access to monkfish and we get 25k cash as well. I got up to 40 prayers so that's protect from range unlocked too now. And here we are, finally onto step number 4 of our clue scroll. Brother Tranquility, oh god. Mosla Harmless or Harmony Island, wow. Looks like we're in for some more quest boys. I honestly expected me to get to Mosla Harmless through either a trouble brewing task or maybe the Black Mask one, but I guess we have to do it now. In order to reach Mosla Harmless, there's yet again some requirements we still need to get. First we have to do Zogar Flesh Eaters, which will unlock the Rum Deal quest, which in turn unlocks the Cabin Fever quest. For Rum Deal I still need to get 47 prayer as well, but I can get 45 and boost plus 2 with the altar at the Edgeville Monastery. Then for Cabin Fever I also need to get a few more levels being 45 crafting and 50 smithing, which won't take too long as I'm already fairly close to both of them. Slash bash down. Just used some crumble undead casts for this one which did the job fairly well. And these orc bones right here will help us just a little bit on our road to 45 prayer. 
Zogre Flesh Eaters quest completed, 20 Fletching and 23 Herblore. Now for the rest of the prayer training I decided to go and kill a bunch of blue dragons to then use the dragon bones on the Ectofunctus. I needed about 80 bones in total I believe to reach the level and with this inventory we should have what we need in the bank. Just bought the necessary buckets of slime from the charter store and now we can go and get this prayer XP sorted. 43 prayer, that is protect from melee unlocked. Now we have all of the protection prayers which will surely be helpful for a lot of stuff in the near future. The very last bone meal. And that's 45 prayer done. Can now use mystic might but more importantly we can boost plus 2 to have enough prayer points for Ramdale. Let's pray at the altar right here in the monastery and that'll give us 47 prayer points. Let's do Ramdeal. Wait, quest done. We got 46 prayer, 51 farming and of course a holy ranch. Now the next quest is Cabin Fever, which we still need the crafting and smithing requirements for. I made enough iron and steel bars and now it's time to turn these into plate bodies again. Boom, 50 smithing. We made 68 iron and 98 steel plate bodies. Let's head back to Vorvik. 131k, that's great, nice amount of cash right there. Gonna get this one last crafting level real quick and then we are sorted. Still had a little bit of glass in the bank and bought some more supplies from the charters as well. And that's 45 crafting. Most harmless, here I come. Cabin fever completed! We have made it to the island of pirates and we can continue our clue scroll. Now before we go and do that, let's first talk to my boy Smith over here, cause he has something I'd like to purchase. If you're unaware with what he sells, you can actually obtain a rapier from him. Now when people hear rapier, they often think of the theater of blood reward, but this weapon is actually just called rapier, nothing more, nothing less. And its stats are the exact same of a rune scimitar, just that instead of being a slash weapon, this one is a stab weapon. It's a pretty good alternative early on and I'll probably use this for a little bit so there we go. But now of course it's time to talk to Brother Tranquility for our clue scroll. Ooh and we get the casket. Will we get some more uniques or not? Oh a black the eyed body that's pretty good. An ancient page but that's not a hard clue unique cause it's on the share table so no unique counting towards our task this clue, but we do get a black di body which is of course a massive upgrade from the studded body we had before. I can't complain, back to Hellhounds we go. At least we have these quest requirements out of the way now for future clue scrolls as well. I'm going to end the episode here. I know we haven't made much progress towards our task, but we did make a lot of progress in general. As I mentioned last time, I can safely say right now that I'll probably be releasing another episode this week to catch up on some of the progress, which will most likely be on Sunday, so stay tuned for that. I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and if you did, make sure to stick around for future adventures. For now, I'm wishing you all a lovely day, and I will talk to you again next time. Take care.